Okay, chapter seven is on stoichiometry. When we have a chemical reaction occur, we can describe it in different ways. First of all, we can say what happened. Somebody put a little bit of sodium metal into a container of water, a hydrogen gas formed, and sodium hydroxide is now available in the solution. Now, we could go on and make it a little more uh, science-y, right, by saying sodium plus water becomes sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. We can even go as far as to give formulas for all of those things. So we'll use the symbols and say sodium plus H2O becomes sodium hydroxide and the diatomic hydrogen gas. Now this one is a skeletal equation. The skeletal equation is still a qualitative description of the chemical reaction because it's not balanced. Stoichiometric coefficients are going to be what helps us balance the equation so that we know how much of each thing there is. We're going to go ahead and use what we had mentioned before, the solid, liquid, gas, and aqueous to describe the state of each of these chemicals. And here is the equation that we had, only now it is balanced. Anytime you have a subscript, it's telling you about the atoms within the compound. So we know that water is H2O. We know that means there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. But these stoichiometric coefficients are the ones in front of each compound. So they're going to show us the number of molecules, or depending on what it is, it might be atoms or formula units of each species. So why? does all this happen? Because we have to have the law of conservation of mass. We aren't going to have any of these atoms just spontaneously disappear or come into existence. We have to have the same number of atoms of each element on both sides of that symbol. So if we look at this, we'll see that there are two sodium atoms. Over here, the sodium is involved with sodium hydroxide. There's only one in this, but there are two of the whole group, so I have two sodiums. Here I have two waters, so that means I have all in all four hydrogens and two oxygens. I go over to this and I see there are my two oxygens because of this. There are two hydrogens, and here's another two hydrogens, so that gives me my four. So I can just follow along that way. Now I can say this in two ways. I can say if two atoms of sodium react with two molecules of water, they'll produce two formula units of sodium hydroxide. I call it a formula unit instead of a molecule because it's ionic in nature, and a molecule of hydrogen. But I can also say that it is two moles of sodium reacting with two moles of water producing two moles of NaOH and one mole of hydrogen molecules. So when we see an equation like this, we should be saying to ourselves, okay, which is more useful to me right now? Is it the idea of looking at it microscopically, talking about individual atoms and molecules and formula units, or is it better for me to look at it in terms of the number of moles? But these stoichiometric coefficients will do both for us. Now, I did mention here that there are other symbols that can show up. For example, this Greek letter delta will be used to indicate that something was heated. It doesn't tell you how much, but it turns out that uh, in this particular case, they are mentioning what it is. If you're trying to take limestone and turn it into this quick lime, you're going to have to heat it up to 800 degrees Celsius to make this decomposition occur. Otherwise, the calcium carbonate would just as soon stay the way it is. Now, a catalyst can increase the rate of a reaction, but it doesn't get consumed in the reaction, so it's not part of it, so to speak. This vanadium 5 oxide is a catalyst, and this is one step of the production of sulfuric acid. If you take sulfur dioxide and add oxygen, you need this catalyst to convince these things to go ahead and combine and become the sulfur trioxide. 